Ready? Good morning. This is Christine Merriman, a, a trauma expert on Speak Up and Empower. And today I'm doing my real talk with Karen Ansel McKinnon, the founder of Speak Up and Empower. Good morning, Karen. Good morning. How <laughs> are you today? I'm fine. Let me tell you how grateful I am to have this opportunity to interview people and friends of interest. And I'm so curious to know more about Speak Up and Empower. And I think our audiences would too. So would you kind of give me a little background of Speak Up and Empower and what your basic business tenant is and how you, how you, how you do this thing? So Speak Up and Empower, um, I had started a community in Canada and this was four years ago. We knew Google loved it. So Google loved it, but it just didn't feel right. You know, it didn't feel right. So um, I was in Cuba. And um, as everybody knows, I pray on everything. So like in the water with my girlfriends and thinking, you know, I know I'm on the right path, mm -hmm. but what should I do? Mm -hmm. And so Marlon and Lori were with me and they say, we always speak up. And that's one thing about when you're with the girls, right? If you're really yeah. with the girls, yeah. that you truly connect with absolutely there's no bullshit you leave That's the right. bullshit at the door right right and you feel comfortable enough that you can talk about anything and share anything with no consequences with no judgment and those friendships and those relationships are golden very very hard yes. to find right they're yes, they especially are. today they're yeah. so they're so hard to find Mm -hmm. So Speak Up and Empower was born and over it's three years now and uh, over the three years we've evolved. And I think, you know, if anybody's out there and has a business, you go through ups and you go through downs. And at the end of the first year, we knew that mm -hmm. we were definitely on the right path. You know, um, we were won the 100 Successful Women in Business Awards in Miami. We, I was okay. speaking in West Palm. You know, we knew that we were doing something right. And, and I'm going to be honest, in my own backyard mm -hmm. where I live. Which is in Canada. In Canada. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't, we weren't really getting seen. Mm -hmm. And that's, I know that's something a lot of women talk about. The hardest place to get seen is in your own backyard. Yeah. And yeah. Um, after that, you know, we were in the UK and Australia and England and the Philippines. And it just started to evolve. Um, and, you know, we really, I did a, a video and it was like, when I first started, you know, just talking to myself and where I saw this to be. Mm -hmm. And really, we haven't gone that far astray. The only thing is, is that I think we've become more compassionate, more focus driven. Um, the wanting to serve has been so, so important mm -hmm. um, to me over the three years, because all of a sudden yeah. COVID hit, right? At the end yeah. of the first year. Yeah. And that changed the whole dynamics. And I um, have, most people don't even realize it, but I have a small marketing company and it's, um, we haven't gone, we haven't gone far, you know, away from our brand or our mission or our vision or any of that. We've, we've really stayed like some people won't think we've stayed on path. What was your mission statement? Yeah. What was your original so, mission statement? I, initially, our mission was to help women. So it was just women-based grow mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. in business. But I'm going to be honest. If in business, there's so many people doing that, right? Yeah. And their messages weren't necessarily when I believed in mm -hmm. you know it's sort of I I believe that 
if you're in business, you need to serve. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. You know, service is so important. It's not always about the almighty dollar. Mm -mm. And, you know, and that's I where- I work with trauma. <laughs> yeah. And that's I where I, that. you know, yeah. yeah. So that's where I think I went astray, you know, because in the beginning, people were saying, well, it has to be, you know, but it doesn't have to be. And so I believe in tithing. And it doesn't mean um, I'm giving to a church, but I'm giving back to the people. That's right. Right? Yeah. yeah. So the more we're seen and the more we're visible and the more everything grows, the more we give back. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's what Speak Up and Empower is. We turn dreams into reality. And just not in business. It's it's sort of like snowballed. We talk about life, relationships, you know. We do talk about business and how mm -hmm. to grow and how to be visible. Mm -hmm. But with the intention that you're also going to serve, mm -hmm. that you're going to give back. And there's so many people in the world needing help that, there are. you know, you have to start somewhere. And that's what makes us different and how? than any other business out there. How, 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 how do you define your difference, please? We turn dreams into reality. We just don't talk the talk. We don't coach. I, I, and I'm going to say something. I really do not like the word coach. I don't either. It's been so overused. Mm -hmm. You know, um, it's, it's not like people are reinventing. Mm -hmm. They're just reinventing the wheel. Mm -hmm. It's not that they're coming up with any anything unique and different, and it's all about resolution. It's resolution. Yeah. It's 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 about resolution. So yeah. you can change somebody, but does that in fact change the world? You know, mm -hmm. resolution. It's fine. It's really results driven, consistent results driven. That someone who is successful today in any form of wealth, whether it be, you know, financial, spiritual, mental, or whatever, will still carry that, sec that success tomorrow. You know, it, it doesn't go up and down. Mm -hmm. It stays very consistent. And I think the importance of community, I've spoken in front of um, the UN for the women's, um, economic development mm -hmm. and I've, I've been like in Ivanti magazine and different things and I always talk about that when you have a community and you form communities within the community all with a, a common ground you create miracles and I see our members as I call them angel makers you know they're not change makers, they're angel makers. Because, you know, when you have somebody like Dewani Jane from Karma, all of a sudden in Delhi, India, you know, being able to get oxygenators to the people in Delhi during COVID, when you see, you know, you yourself help people with mental health issues, mm -hmm. when you see the actual work you know being done mm -hmm. from people who have businesses but they're also giving back mm -hmm. you know dear mm -hmm. sunshine uh, she dear sunshine is one of the most incredible organizations they pulled artisans and musicians off the street and they went out and sang and played and did everything for the people mm -hmm. during COVID you know we've had um I will build our confidence in Africa you know, it, just an incredible organization that we're associated with. And so we are far more than a website. We, you know, I tell people when you're I look an at actualizer, people, we're, I, I love Actually, that term. You, you, are, are, you are because you, you, you help them to become, they help. Well, we all need to self-actualize in our own lives. That's really what we're doing. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that's why 
I am so grateful to be a part of you is because you are helping me to self-actualize. And that's what I'm doing with the people that I'm inviting in. I'm helping them to self-actualize. But I also know that many, many people just have no interest in paying for this because they can get, they can hear so much. And so many people are saying the same thing over and over and over and over again in pursuit of their goals that it gets, it, it's very hard to be original. It and is. I have always been a creative and having a creative mind is not like a normal mind. I mean, I've never been a conformist, I, but I'm not, I'm not necessarily a rebel either. I just think for myself, I hate group think. And so how do you combat all of that in helping to yeah. us to actualize ourselves? Yeah, and that, that's a really good one. I, I believe everybody is individualistic, that yeah. they are giving God-given skill sets. They are. And, and so I think a lot of it is getting them to dig deep, you know, and, and figure it out. Like, oh, Yolande Vajon from Africa, mm -hmm. Johannesburg. Mm -hmm. When she started with us, she had been an addict. Like, she, she, if you heard her life story, mm -hmm. Yeah. And everything. Within one year, she was on the Boston Herald magazine. She Good was <laughs> all over the place as very yeah. being one of the first spiritual coaches yeah. in North America. Yeah. And uh, her testimony is right on the beginning of our, our website. Um, yeah, she she's just was so incredible. But you know what? I think the big thing is that people get so involved in their own ego. They don't listen to community. Mm -hmm. They don't listen to how can I actually it's, get there? Never, it never is about us. It, it never is. It's about who we are serving. Who we are serving. And if you can pull all of that together, mm -hmm. miracles happen. Do you know, mm -hmm. they happen every, every day in my world. Mm -hmm. Every day, you know, um, I talked to uh, one of our members, um, Dr. Cynthia Guy, yesterday, and um, she works with dementia and Alzheimer's and different things. Mm -hmm. And at 81 years old, she is so incredibly motivated still. Yeah, but yeah, I, I think I, love her. I know, but I think the biggest thing too was she said when in in the community, she goes, when you you when I talk to you, when I learn from you, or when I learn from somebody in the community, she goes, it's always positive. Mm -hmm. There's always a positive answer. It's not, you know, and, but there's always not even a solution. We come up with resolutions. So a solution. So would, you define, would you define resolution then? That's a good one. So mm -hmm. solution is an, is the answer to the moment. Mm -hmm. Resolution is the ability to create the change and to stop something. So it's an intention. It's, it's an intention. Yeah. yeah. So like we have a group that Jody Parr and um, Sylvia, Silvio, um, another incredible member. Um, and she, they're trying to stop human trafficking. Yep. Gigi, you know, we have, and, and by bringing awareness and, you know, Sylvia actually goes into the field. She was part of the Underground Railroad, you know, and helps to try to bring these girls mm -hmm. back home. And, and Gigi was one of them. Yeah. And Gigi I now. Identify. Yeah. Gigi now has just created miracles herself. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she's changing the lives of so many other women and I I think that everybody um has a purpose and they may Absolutely. not they may not realize it mm -hmm. sometimes you have to actually sit with them and mm -hmm. talk and mm -hmm. then all of a sudden they realize what their yeah their purpose is right but it takes it takes the ability to go inside yourself to find yes. your purpose. And many, many people cannot do that. They have no awareness of the fact that they're not self-aware. Mm -hmm. So 
That's that's been something that I've noticed very, very much in in the trauma world is when you're traumatized, all you have is your story. And really, trauma is not what happened to you. And believe me, I know some very, very horrible stories. I've participated in horrible stories in my own youth. But it's it's really how we separate from ourselves and what we shut down and how we don't act right or we act out too much because we have been wounded so badly that we can't participate anymore. So how do, you know, in my work, I'm trying to help them to become aware of their own dysregulations, their own dissociations, and and to bring them to awareness of the fact that they can calm themselves simply by breath work or by just sitting quietly for three minutes, just three little minutes, just sit, listen, don't think, just listen to what's going on around you. Even if it's, if it's a garbage can out front that's being emptied, or if it's birds, or if it's water waves or whatever, but mm-hmm. just calm yourself. Because I'll tell you, in this world, how many people actually sit quietly for even three minutes, because we're so distracted. And we have, you know, we, we feel like the world is falling apart. And if not, then we feel like the internet is just blaring at us with all of this information. And, and it's very hard to get people to sit quietly. That's why I use creativity. Creativity isn't an answer to trauma. It's a point of focus. When you're making something, you're not thinking about what's going on around you. You're thinking about what you're making. And when I, I love have your them, dolls. I love those dolls. They tell me, they tell the story of my life. I love them. Thank you. That came out of my Harvard class. Wow. They got me to Joanne Fabrics, which is like a, a hobby store with a lot of fabrics. And mm-hmm. I had never really been in there and I found those dolls. Wow. But, but it's very important for them to become self-aware. Then we can start to help them find a purpose. I mean, I'm 70, I'm not a kid anymore, but I know today that I am fulfilling my purpose. I've been an artist my whole life. I I spent a lot of time worrying about who would even believe me because I've been an artist. But then suddenly somebody said to me, well, it just makes so much sense. You know, here you were a corporate art director and you've you've dealt with kids and you've been in schools and you've been working all the time. But really, you know, what, what, how did you find your purpose? Well, it was by fulfilling a promise that I had made to myself as a child to find peace with my mother. And when you find peace with a person, all of the negatives vanish. I mean, talk about miracles, but that gave me the inspiration. And of course I had been retired by my mother for four years already. And I didn't have any plan for it. I didn't have any, you know, thought about it, but I had spent every penny driving a thousand miles door to door to take care of her for four years. Mm -hmm. So each one of us has our own story. And so I am, I'm, I'm so grateful to be doing these interviews because it just gets me out in front of people. Yeah. Whereas otherwise I've been sitting on this chair for the last eight years of my life, changing my life. And I, I, I reached a point where I couldn't even, I wasn't even talking to anybody about my purpose. I was just, you know, I finally had to get, I, ha- I knew I had to get a business coach. And because nobody teaches you how to do what things first, second, third, fourth, and fifth in building your business. Everybody's got all these hoopla ideas. They talk about yeah. vibrations and all this stuff. So it's it's very important for people to be able to quietly sit and dig into themselves to find their purpose. But it's so beautiful when they do. Yeah, yeah, I I agree with you. And I think, you know, I when it when we talk about stories, I tell people there's always times and places to tell your story. Do you mm-hmm. know? Mm-hmm. There's always times and places. It's not something that you have to do. Mm-hmm. You know? Um, because when you tell your story, there's always repercussions to the story yeah. too. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So there's the good and the bad and the ugly, you know? <laughs> and so That's the one thing about community Mm -hmm. is that you can do it in a safe, secure spot first and talk about it and then decide, is that your, is that where your purpose comes from Mm -hmm. or, or that's not where your purpose comes from. 
Um, another, another big part of it is having support. You know, this mm -hmm. little doll in the middle that looks so dark, there's a little black cage around her. In my life, because as a child growing up, I got no guidance at all mm -hmm. from my mother. I've always been living in my own cage, powering through, figuring it all out for myself. And I've never asked anybody for support because I couldn't hear another no or be judged. But when I got into this, actually, I didn't start with a business class with my, with my new business guide. I started in the class with the universal manage, um, principles because in my life, although I knew them, they had been blown away by all the tending that I got into over an eight year period of time of just tending my elders. And so in that class, at, after being in the class for about five months, the teacher looked at me and said, well, Christine, and I said, what? She said, well, you know, you've never shared, you know, you let everybody else share. So all of a sudden I was on the spot. And by, by December, I knew suddenly that I loved these women, that I had a real support structure around me. And then, then Dina became my business guide and she is an incredible teacher, but she has taken us inch by inch, little baby steps all the way through so that now we have a, a nuclear group that is so tight and so caring and compassionate and challenged by their lives that it's, it's incredible. And that's what I'm trying to create through you is a larger group of people that will come back and listen and, and respond. It's hard to get people to respond though. I know. I want to say hi to Harmeet. She's um, listening right now. So this, she's from India. Hello, Harmeet. And she nice is part of Speak Up New Power and she just had the most adorable baby boy. So <laughs> she's been on leave. And that's, and we find that some of our members, you know, come and go over the three years. And mm -hmm. especially now, you know, a lot of our people who did talks, they have kids at home mm -hmm. um, all the time. And, you know, life changes, you know, yes, it, 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 it changes. But I hope as a community, we provide a safe network that they can always come back to, Yeah. you know, and yeah. on top of, so on that, we have initiatives. So initiatives are purpose-driven. And one of our newest ones is going to be for single mothers. Wonderful. And because I believe single moms have been hit super hard yes. during COVID. Like They've super, always been super hit hard. hard. You know, yes. trying to work, you know, <coughs> having kids, no child care because nobody wants your kids during COVID. You they know, don't have money. Um, Who has they money? don't have the money. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's really hard. I don't and think the services aren't even available. No. And it's just not where I live in Canada. Um, I started our first, um, I guess our first community. This is like a test project here in my city, London, Ontario, that mm -hmm. we're starting, but we're rolling it out. It's going to India, we know already, and it will hopefully go to the US and you know, different um, countries will come up. How does it work? Yeah. How does it it's, work? So it's, it's an amazing program where we're going to provide mentorship. We have, um, example, at Christmas time, my husband, we're delivering Tylenol because some of the moms, they couldn't afford Tylenol for their kids, right? Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. But it's also getting community members to also help support and give up or other women who knew what it was like to be single, mm -hmm. who now are successful. Mm -hmm. you know, to help and, and to know that, you know, the, the amount of women have that are single moms have such a high, high suicide rate right now. They're mm -hmm. totally hooked on body dysmorphia because yeah. of Instagram. Right. And so, but there is another world for them. There's a world of hope and there's a world where they can get out of the system and there's a world where they can start feeling, you know, um, just not accountable because accountability is really important, mm -hmm. but where that people truly love them and care for them. Yes. So that's just another. Yes. It's um, support. It's support. all about support. It's all about support. So that will yeah. be one of our initiatives. I will build our confidence. Mm -hmm. We're doing a summit um, beginning of April. Mm -hmm. um, it was supposed to be in February, but we had um, a lot of, um, our speakers are not sick. So we decided that we could just hold off a little bit 
-hmm. until the numbers went down. Mm -hmm. We're in, um, we're, we've been basically in lockdown almost where I live. Yeah. So, you know, I am um, where I live because I have an immune compromised immune system and I can't get vaccinated. Yeah. Yeah. So we do believe that you can change the world, you know, one step at a time and by coming together in community. But I want to do something because it's going to show right now. So okay. I'm going to share my screen. Yeah. And give me one minute. It's going to show us. There we go. So for everybody out there who has never it. been. Oh, are you sharing your screen? Because I'm all I see is you. No, I was. Maybe it. There. Can there. you see it now? So yes. Very if good. you haven't been, this is Speak Up and Empower. So we believe in educating, impacting, and promoting. And, and promoting is making it visible. So it doesn't matter um, whether it's an initiative mm -hmm. or, you know, you need to be seen. Um, we have, so this is why I say we're more than just um, a website. We have collaborators, mm -hmm. partners, and, and, you know, a lot of companies that are coming on board. Um, Great. Yeah. So, and I Talk would love to have. I want to see what the initiative. Pardon? That's. I, I wanted to know your initiatives. That's beautiful. Yeah. yeah. So, and we have Bible feeder children. Um, that's um really been kicking off to end childhood hunger in North America with the RTG group. So, I would like to have twenty initiatives. So, if people, I'm going to stop sharing. If people have dreams, or have an organization that they believe should be global because I never think local. Like I might start a local initiative, mm -hmm. but it's really meant to snowball. Yeah. You know, um, so if people out there and we were going to talk about pets today, but if someone has a pet initiative out there, then mm -hmm. reach out to us. Reach Betty out to White us. does right now, you know, at her, on, yeah. her, on her desk, she started a, a an initiative to save the animals. It's just really lovely. Yeah. So you know what? Reach out to us. So any other questions? Well, you said um, you wanted to explain more about the background of Speak Up and Empower. I mean, do you feel like that's what you've been talking about with these initiatives and everything? Or is uh, there? Yeah, I, like I don't say? believe, you know, I've, I've come full circle this year. Mm -hmm. And that story will be told at another time, <laughs> not here online. That's okay. But, but um, I believe that when you've come full circle, you, and most people don't, you learn to accept the past. Yes. And, and, and you learn to you, leave yeah. it behind. Yes. Do you know? Because if you don't let your past die, it will not let you live today. Right. It, it, and, and it's just that simple. But also, all we have is right now. It is. This is our all today. that we have is right here, right now. Yeah. So I, let's make I, the most of it. Yeah, I agree. Sorry, I got to put my glasses on so I can see. I agree with you like 100%. You know, we have all mm -hmm. we have is right now. And, mm -hmm. and I tell people it begins with you. It does. It does. It begins with you. So whatever you're going to do in life, Mm -hmm. It begins with you. If you mm -hmm. don't like your job, I, I, I can be honest. If you don't like your job, oh well. <laughs> you know what? Yeah. yeah. It it, it, it pays it. the bills, yeah. but yeah. yeah, that doesn't have to define your life. And neither does your past. And neither does your it. past. You yeah. know, it's your yeah. purpose, right? So right. it's your purpose that defines you. Those mm -hmm. it goes back to those skill sets. Mm -hmm. And you know, there are tons of organizations that can help you get out of that funk. But I believe that you have to accept that the change is within you. Now, one thing, um, we, we do have um, a membership fee. It's very nominal. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you, there's reasons why mm -hmm. we, people should have fees. Um, because we find that when you don't, when you give somebody something for free, mm -hmm. whether your, your 
working with a client, whether you're teaching them wherever, um, they don't have Even the same amount of respect skills. there. Yeah. No, they don't have the same amount of respect there. They, they don't they follow have, They have to invest in you. Yes. They have, yes. Because really what they're doing is they're investing in themselves. In themselves. Yeah. And if they want to be visible, like I have all the time this morning, I, 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 I do other projects, right? So I write or I blog or I, I, I train. I like the word train better than coach. You're um, a wonder woman. Yeah. And <laughs> so I do other incentives mm -hmm. that are my own because, you know, that's part of my purpose. And mm -hmm. so today I did a whole lesson. Then after the lesson, a gentleman said to me, well, are you going to do this for me for free? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Everybody wants yeah. things for nothing. Yeah. It's like, the point is, things? the point is, is that you have to be willing to invest in yourself. Yes. And, and you know, many people are saying the same thing. I mean, you know, we're all talking about the vibrations. We're all talking about the universe and we're all talking about these wonderful aspects. But the point is, is that if you want to heal, from whatever and to grow you have to invest in the process you have to invest with some supplies you have to invest with time you have to in yeah. invest with your intentions yeah. and so to get people to do that you have to ask for money because we all have to earn our own keep every single one of us on the face of the earth has to earn our own keep yeah and so if you're willing to invest in me i am willing to invest in you and and, I, that, and you nailed it. That's right. You, you nailed it right there. Yeah. It's yeah. you know it's um yeah. So I, I and then the other thing too was at the time I said to him like, but do you serve what? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you know, do you serve? No, yeah. I don't know what. You know, I'm just worried about getting my business off the ground. Yeah. Yeah. Well. And it's all about me. <laughs> it's all about me. And, yeah. and that's one thing we are not. That's right. It, we, we are about, you know, each other. And, and well, part of this is because we're women. And part of it is because we are becoming enlightened women. Yes. And we do have and, a couple men members. Yeah. But I mean, know, my basic market, my niche market when mm -hmm. I started out and I had to do my own market research. And even as an, a big corporate art director, I had never done my own market research. The accounting right. executive had done that. But my basic market was women aged 50 to 80, because up until 50, women are so involved with their families, their careers, their children, their, their, their kids' education, their own education, all of these all of these myriads of things are happening to you. At 50, you start to take stock or you may calm one day and sit for three minutes and realize that you're not happy with your job or you wanna do something else or you wanna do, you know, you've gotta get more education or whatever. Right. But also these women and everybody says, well, who, who, who's on the internet at 80? Well, you'd be surprised. But also women age 50 to 80 had been raised in the silent century, the last century where yes. we couldn't talk about those dirty little things that had happened to us. Nobody wants to hear about that. Today, finally, we've had Jeffrey Epstein. We can talk about pedophilia. We know that human trafficking goes on in every county across the country. Don't act so surprised because you- One, out of, one out of seven. That's right. One out of seven have been approached now for human trafficking. Yes, and in the number of the number of men in the U.S. because yeah. the U.S. first came out with this stat. So the number yeah. of men, like in high schools, mm -hmm. is almost just as high as the women now. Yes, like actually, and, the men between ages seventeen and twenty-three are much more vulnerable to rape than women. That's I know, and, and, and also and in, they, in our people Midwestern say a man states, can't be raped, right? Yes, they can. They, and and then in our right. Midwestern states, we have come to understand that. 40% of the pedophiles today are not dirty old men. They're boys ages 11 to 15. That it's, shocked it's me appalling. because 
what is that going to teach the next generation and the next generation? These boys are looking at pornography on the internet because it's so available. And they think that this is the, the norm. They have no, the norm. They, they have no context for it. They don't know Parents it. That every girl is forced yeah. to smile. She's forced to act as if this is all okay. And then they do it to their little siblings or they do it to their little neighbors. And so this is going to set up a whole multi-generation of aberrant behavior. Yeah. We can stop it. Yeah, but... we can break generational curses. We can, you know. Yes, we can. If we, and I think that's a really big thing, you know. Mm -hmm. um, so Charlene, don't get me wrong. Um, Internet Sense first. She's winning tons of awards out there. And yes. you know what? It's If you are a consenting adult, what you do in your bedroom is your, is your business. Right. But right? you're an adult. But you're an adult. But that's if right. you subject your children yes. to it, then there's something really wrong with you. Do that's you know? Right. That's why because, they've always been using children is because they I know. think the children will never talk and they, they can they can yeah. do what they want and, and it won't affect anybody. Well, it just it it damages you. I'm a case yeah. sample, you know. I mean, yeah. it, it's just such an aberrant behavior. But we can grow. We can always, always grow through anything. I mean, I've met Holocaust survivors. I've met prisoners from Namibia. I've met, uh, I've met so many immigrants from yes, Long, Laos, yes, Cambodia, North and in South India. Vietnam. You know, it people have been through horrible situations, but we can always grow through it. It's just about the kind of support that you receive and right. how willingly you invest in your own growth. Yes, that's, yeah, that's, I, that's I, I agree. Good. You know, it's very easy for people to live secular lives in their home yeah. and, not, and not look at the world around them. Yeah, yeah. But I, I have a six-year-old granddaughter who's going to be seven in a week. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I have to mm -hmm. say that. Mm -hmm. Anyways. I want to leave the world a better place. I do. And I, have and I figure that. if, when I started this, I thought if I can just change one person's life, one, mm -hmm. then I've created a miracle and that's the angel makers, right? Mm -hmm. But I can tell you, I have changed way more than one. You person's. have. You have changed. Way, way more than one person's life. And, and I get really emotional about that. <laughs> Yes. You have um, every right to it's, it's I get it's, so you know, like just give yourself credit because that's another thing that people can't do. They can't give no, themselves any credit. No, you're right. You know, <laughs> and that's why we say I feel so blessed because yeah, yeah. I I've been and it's not that I'm different than anybody else. Right. I am just the girl next door. Yeah. You know, and yeah. um just like anybody else out there, dealt with a lot of shit. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yep, yep. and you you can overcome. Well, I you found can in, take it. I have found or, in my life that most people don't like to call their traumas trauma. Well, that's okay. Right. You don't have to call it that. I understand that, but it still has affected you, and you are not you know you are not acting it. You are not able to flourish because of it because you're holding back or your your distance. Or some of us have actually dissociated into multiple personalities that we're not even aware of all the time. Yeah. That can all be healed and it can all be mm -hmm. rectified as long as you choose a good support structure to, to join. I have, I'm, I'm bringing on more people who are involved in my work and, and some, I mean, there's a woman who is just a mess of a woman when I first met her a couple of years ago. Today, she is very powerful. She, but she has just learned techniques for her own healing, learned them so she could teach them to other people. And now she's getting out there. She comes from uh, Nova Scotia. Right. And, um, and she, I mean, Nova Scotia is a wide open country. I, it, it, I mean, it's very sparsely populated in terms of numbers of people, but still, Every problem exists in every single corner of the world. And that's, yeah, you know, and you and nailed I, it right there. Yeah, because, I was an exchange yeah. student in high school and I was sent to Istanbul. I went from this little tiny town in Wisconsin. I was actually born in Madison, the University Hospital, but I was raised in this little town. I was sent to Istanbul. Within two days, I was noticing how many things I had in common with these Turkish girls. I just yeah. couldn't believe it. Such a different world, such a different culture, absolutely, totally different than anything that I had ever known. It just blew me right out of high school. 
high school. When I came home, my friends didn't want to hear a word about it. We had a summer too, you know, Merriman. And so I just, you know, I just held it inside of myself. But I got out of that town within two weeks of graduating high school to start college because I could. I came from the hugest generation yet. And they needed to get kids in there in the summer so they could be continuing students in the fall and then they could bring in more, you know, all that business stuff. But, you know, once you realize that the world is one place, and if you can ever grasp that every single person on the earth is necessary for every other person on the earth and that we are all interrelated together and we are interrelated to all the trees, rocks, animals, birds, bugs, reptiles around us to be an existence all united. And here we are just warring and we're just arguing and we're just so you know opinionated because we're so afraid of losing our individuality. Well, right. get over it. I mean, what is individuality anyway? You, we all need each other. I'll tell you, for me to come into getting support at the age of 65, it was just such a massive shift because in the art world, you work alone. You never, you never go out of your studio. You know, I mean, I, I lived in Vermont, which is a very rural state, but uh, I would go down to New York City, Washington, D.C., all the big cities to sell my work in Rockefeller Center. I mean, I've been everywhere. But the whole point for me of selling was not to sell. It was to engage. It was to get to know these people. Because then if I, you know, if I could just figure out, you know, how they are in their life and, you know, what kind of maybe class they lived at, even if they were poor, it didn't matter to me. And I'm never in competition with the artist next to me because they're a different person and they have a totally right. different thing, as is true in anything that we are doing in our lives today, period. So we get so wrapped up in these concepts of opinions, of individuality, of, of, of competition, when actually, when we work together, I mean, I have a piece of art in my mind that I'm going to make. It may take me 10 years to do it, but I'm going to include every picture of every woman on earth. And I'm going to make them into an energy field around her body. And every time it goes through her heart, you can see that face for maybe five so seconds. Beautiful. And, and, and I will do this because I will be reaching out to them. But now I haven't reached, I haven't been able to reach locally because I'm not even vaccinated. So what I've been is a board member at my local health center. And this is a very good little health center. We also have the one community that's the worst in the drug world in this whole state right here. So as a board member, I just talked with their marketing manager this week and, and, and gave her tons of ideas because now I'm, I'm getting so familiar with online businesses, which is the business of the future that I can tell her all of these aspects that we have that she never even thought of. She's a community. And, you're, and you're serving at the same time. That's right. And you're I said, serving. All I want for, for participating with us. And, and she was, we talked about competition yeah. and we have a brand new CEO who's, who is not competitive and he's a very humble person, but he has just taken award after award after award from the state for his, his, his management. He's been there for two years. His new management of this organization is just unique and he makes people accountable. He makes them responsible because that's how we all have to be in our lives. You don't take a job and expect to be babysat. You take a job to help your boss, to serve your boss and to serve the public. Like your boss is serving you by having you there, teaching you the ropes, getting you to serve the public. It's all a give and take. That is really what life is about. That's what I like about Speak Up and Empower. I just love your, your native wisdoms that you have from the first Canadian, do you call them the first, um, first Canadians? How do, you, how do you talk about your native folk? Here we call them Native Americans. That's the one that seems yeah. to be the most acceptable. I like calling them our indigenous people, but I've always been in love with them. I came from Indian country. We have- Grandmother's sheep. voice. Yeah. Yes. I just love it. When, when that woman talked about corn and making tea from the, the, the corn silks, I just, I never, I never heard anything like that before. You also had a gentleman who was a scholar. He was a deep scholar and he had several native women with him as he spoke about the culture. It was just so. Yeah, that was Jody Harbour. Yeah. Grandmother's voice. So, so you, you, 
I, I'm so grateful that you offer that. And then you had that world drum. Oh, I love those world drum programs where you go all Yeah, we haven't did, we didn't do, we haven't did any of that. We sort of um, well, pulled you out of it during COVID. <laughs> At least you did it. And but, I know that drums yeah, are we have done it. every culture on earth. Absolutely every culture has had drums in them. Yeah. And so, you know, when we get into these women drumming groups today, which has been kind of like a contemporary thing to do, and they think they're so unique. They're just picking up old, 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 old habits and, and cultural motivations. That's why I thought, you know, when we talked about animals, oh, we have to get into animal totems and spirit animals because, but I love right. that. I mean, it's, it, if we can just- But, that's, that, our... but I think that's a great um, talk. And I think that we need to find somebody that you can interview. So if there's yeah. somebody out there who's listening. Yeah, um, please. Yeah. But on that note, I think um, we've we've hit our time. So, okay. yeah. So I want to uh, thank everybody for attending this. And, and thank you, Karen, um, so much. If you have any interest in Speak Up in Power, you want to know more about it, you have a yeah. dream, you want to turn it into an initiative, we'd love to hear from you. So Great. thank you very much. And thank you, Christine. You're very welcome. Thank you, Karen. And thank you, everybody out there for hearing what we're doing. I hope you'll come and join us. Thank you. Have a good day. Bye. Bye.